This is R2D Tech and today it's all about the new iPhone SE 2, so stay tuned. The idea with this phone has always been that it's the budget version of the iPhone. This specific model should be out to the public by the end of this month. So the idea with this budget phone from Apple is that you take the design, the chassis, from an old phone, the iPhone 8, which is a slightly dated design, but you replace the internals with those of, for example, the iPhone 11 Pro. That basically means that although the design is dated, you have very, very good specifications. In this case, that means that you get the A13 Bionic chip, which is the same chip that you get in the iPhone 11 Pro. Now let's talk about the price. So although you're getting this same processor, which you find in Apple's most premium phone, Apple's most premium phone is around $1,000 whereas this phone is around $399, which is a huge decrease in price. Apple hasn't really been that competitive when it came to budget phones for a long time now, and that basically meant that other companies like Xiaomi and Samsung dominated the budget phone market. They provided decent specifications paired with a somewhat modern design for a very cheap price. Now, in recent years, they've actually been upping their price and Apple has as well. It seems though that with this phone, Apple has really targeted that budget phone market, which is something that they haven't really done before. So let's see what else you get for that $399 price tag. You only get one lens on the back of the phone, which means no ultra wide and no telephoto. But to be honest, 90% of the people who buy these phones probably hardly ever use those features anyway. So that main lens is 12 megapixels, which is decent. And supposedly this phone will be receiving the software tweaks which the iPhone 11 Pro receives, which actually makes the images and video out of the phone a lot better. So if you compare the two price tags, $1,000 compared to $399, so far you're getting a very similar camera experience and the very latest chipset in both of them, which is a great deal. Not to mention that like with the iPhone 11 Pro, this camera can also film 4K 24, 30 or 60 frames per second, which is very, very high quality. And we know from experience that iPhones generally tend to have the very best video on smartphones. The selfie camera is slightly more disappointing though. It's a seven megapixel lens and it only goes up to 1080p 30 FPS when you do video. That is slightly limiting compared to what you could do on the 11 Pro, for example, but to be honest, most people don't really use the selfie camera that much. And considering you're saving a lot of money, if you're not the type of person that uses that selfie camera very often, this won't be a big deal for you at all. On top of this, a slight downside of only having the one main lens on the back is that although portrait mode does still work on people, it won't work on anything else. So it won't work on pets or objects. To be honest, for literally 99% of people, this won't really matter at all. Because on a daily basis, not many people use the portrait mode on pets or objects anyway. Of course, being an iPhone, you're still limited to the lightning port, so no USB-C, and also there's no headphone jack. So you'll need to buy the dongle if you want to plug your wired earphones into this phone. But that's been the case for a while now with most phones, so it's not a big deal. If you're very into looking at content on a very vibrant, perhaps OLED display, then this phone will really not be for you. <laughs> this has got the very dated LCD panel that we saw on the iPhone 6, 7, and 8. In this case, the resolution isn't too bad. It's 750p, so you'll be able to view 720p content on YouTube, that means. It's definitely a very large step back from the sort of display you get on the 11 Pro, which is an OLED high resolution display. But for a very large proportion of people, especially those who are looking for a budget phone, this sort of thing probably doesn't matter too much. In terms of size, the display is 4.7 inches, which is actually very small compared to some phones that we've seen this year. On the one hand, that means that viewing content might be a little more difficult because the display is so much smaller. But on the other hand, that makes the whole device a lot more pocketable 
and a lot more easy to use with just one hand. Speaking of using your hands, this phone has Touch ID on the front through that classic Apple Home button. The way I see it, even though this is a very dated feature and maybe it makes the phone look very dated as well, I always liked having that Home button and that Touch ID on the front anyway. Of course, yes, it does decrease the screen to body ratio quite a lot. But if you're buying this phone, like if you bought the iPhone 8, 7 or 6, that sort of thing is to be expected. I know it's a very big deal in the tech community nowadays, this whole screen to body ratio thing, and for me it is a big deal as well. But when I go and ask other people, my friends, my parents, hardly any of them actually say that they care whether the phone has a large or small screen to body ratio. All they really care about are the fundamentals, like having a good camera or having a very fast processor. Now onto the battery. In this case, you get a 1825 milliamp hour battery, which yes, does sound very small, but when you pair it with that A13 Bionic chip and the fact that the display is very small and also LCD, so it doesn't drain a lot of power, that most likely means that the battery life will be very good. Of course, you'll have to wait till the phone is actually released so we can test that. In addition to the battery, you also get wireless charging, which is nice to see. And that's of course why there's a glass back on the phone. Charging can go up to 18 watts of power, which is decent for a phone of this size and they advertise charging 50% in 30 minutes, which is very good. When it comes to storage and RAM, you can either get 64, 128, or 256 gigabytes of storage, whereas all of these phones will only have three gigabytes of RAM. Now, if you compare this to the crazy amount of RAM that you get on like the Galaxy Ultra, so that's 12 gigabytes of RAM, it might seem very, very small. It's very important though to consider that the latest iPhones don't have much RAM either, but they work very well. So I would say that with the A13 Bionic chip and the very good software optimization which Apple has, the three gigabytes of RAM which they offer in this phone is perfectly sufficient. And I would go as far as saying that this phone will probably be very rapid indeed. With this phone, design clearly is not the main priority. You do have that modern looking glass back and the solid aluminium build of the phone, but bringing that screen to body ratio back, it's not gonna look very new. If you're the type of person that cares what your phone looks like, then this definitely won't be for you. But for the very large proportion of people who aren't really in the tech community, the design of this phone won't really be an issue. They do offer some very nice colors though. You can choose between white, red or black, which gives you a nice variety of colors. Back onto security though, you will be missing out on Face ID because this doesn't have the infrared sensors. Of course, the Touch ID will serve that purpose on this phone. I really don't think that's a big issue. And I'd say that the Touch ID is probably more practical in many scenarios, especially if you're wearing sunglasses or masks or anything like that. I tend to find that the Face ID has a lot of misses, whereas Touch ID is a lot more consistent. That's basically the rundown in terms of specs and what I think about the phone. I think that this phone is gonna be a huge hit with many people, just as the original iPhone SE was. Apple are really gonna be stealing a lot of people away from Samsung and Xiaomi and other such companies when it comes to the budget market. Probably 90% of people I know would want to have an iPhone, even if they're currently Android users. Now, that's definitely not me. I really like the Android ecosystem, but I know that a lot of people really do want to have the Apple brand. To be able to get that in 2020 for $399, while all of their other phones have been upwards of $700 up until now, I think that's one of the best deals we've ever seen with Apple. I really do think that this phone is gonna be a huge success when it comes out, especially since I like like using the camera on my phone for video, if that main camera on the back is really as good or almost as good as the iPhone 11 Pro's main camera, then that's really amazing. You're basically getting around five or $600 off one of the best cameras you can find right now. That's when it comes to video. If you're looking for the very best camera quality on a budget phone for photos, then I'd have to recommend something like the Pixel 3a. Overall, this is a very interesting time in the tech world, seeing Apple, a company which is known for releasing very expensive phones, finally try and get into that budget market. I'm really excited to see what they do next year. But that's it for this week. If you liked the video, then leave a thumbs up. And if you loved it, hit the subscribe button and notification bell below.